Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome to the next session and the topic is identifying web elements in Selenium WebDriver. Now, uh, in the last few sessions, we have learned how we can invoke a browser and we executed certain commands on Selenium. In this session, we are going to see how we can interact with the different elements we have on a website. Say for example, I uh, go to any website, let me open a website called let's say facebook.com so i've just opened the incognito mode and here you can see uh, i'm on the landing or home page of the facebook.com and here let's say i want to log into this application so when i have to log into this application what do you think what i have to do first i have to enter something in this email id then i have to enter something in this password and then i can click on the login button right so how will you identify where to write okay now whatever you see on this page this text box here this password box here or this login button or the, uh, in the sign up form we have these uh, e these text box or these drop down all these things on a website is known as web element okay and to interact with these web element we have to first identify the HTML code of it. Like if I just say right click inspect, when you do a right click inspect, it opens up a development tool. And with that tool, you can uh, see what is the HTML code of this particular web element. Okay. Like this particular element here, you see it's of input type, right? Uh, input type of element. Uh, here you can see the tag name this first word is known as tag name is input and it has certain attributes in it like type equal to email is one attribute class equal to this is another attribute name equal to email is another attribute id equal to email is another attribute so these are attributes so using some of these features you can identify those elements now selenium provides us eight locators or identifiers to identify these web elements on a page those are id name class name tag name link text partial link text css selector and xpart now out of these eight the first three you can directly find rather first four you can directly find in the html code okay uh, let me just open again this facebook thing so here if you see uh, i have input tag right uh, the html tag is input and if you see one of the attribute here is name and there also i was showing you that name is one of the locator right similarly you have id so id is another type of locator available here then we have class here so class name is another type of locator tag name this input as the tag name is also another locator the only thing you have to uh, see is out of these which one is unique okay if you see name input input there can be many like if you see another uh, here this tag this also is of input type that means uh, tag, nom tag name we cannot use but others we can use but because those ids and those um, uh, ids and this name is unique here so in the future, I'm going to tell you how you can uh, see if these tag names or these attributes are unique or not. Tag name, we can simply see. You can see if there are other input tags or not. Uh, for attributes, I'll uh, cover that in some of in, in future lectures. Okay, these four locators you can directly use from the attributes of uh, your HTML code. Okay. This link text and partial link text are specially used for links that we are going to cover in the CSS and XPath will be covered in detail in upcoming sessions. So let's start with the first four. Okay. So to start with, I'll, I'm going to work on a very simple website, which is guru 99 bank application. So uh, you can type the URL as demo.guru99.com slash v4 this is the url of a dummy website provided by guru 99 uh, site which you can use for testing it's a very basic application so we are going to work with this and for our upcoming few sessions and 
uh, first step what we'll do is we'll generate credentials for it so there is an option visit here so click on here it will redirect you to this page just enter some email id okay uh, you can enter your own email id for this click on submit and here you get the details so just copy paste this user id and password and save it somewhere so i prefer saving it on my sticky notes So I'll save these credentials on my sticky note and we are going to uh, use that. Okay, so here are my note, uh, these user ID and password, right? So go back here and again access the same site, demo.guru99.com slash v4. Then First step, what we are going to do is we are going to enter the user ID and password here and click on login button. Okay, so these are the steps we are going to follow for this website. I'll copy this URL, okay, and I'll open my Eclipse. Here, I'm going to create a new package and let's say I call it as Guru99 project. So some of the sessions we are going to do here. So one of them is uh, this Guru99 project, right? In this, I'll create my first class and let's say I call it Guru99 project as my class name. Okay, rest everything you can keep it as it is. Now, the first step, first step I'm going to do here is I'll work on Chrome browser. So let's say here I say Chrome browser. Uh, and press sorry sorry it will be chrome driver so first of all i'll create a variable called chrome driver let's say driver what is this this is to invoke the browser right so the first method i'm going to create is public void invoke browser and uh, I need that driver instance so I can copy paste it from uh, here yeah. uh, after that I also need my URL so I'll create one string variable let's say string URL and I'll copy paste the URL from here right paste it Okay, then I'm going to uh, first of all maximize the window. So I'll say driver dot manage manage what windows and what I want to do maximize. Next, I'm going to delete all the cookies. So driver dot manage delete all cookies, and then I'm going to navigate to the URL, um, and the URL I have is this. So what this step is doing, it is taking me to this page now after that next step i have to do is enter the username enter the password and click on login button so let's see how we can do that so for that i'll create one method public void let's say login okay and for login let's say i pass two parameters username and string password right then the next step is i have to identify an element here and write into it okay so for that i'm going to show you two different ways uh, depending upon how you're writing your code you can choose uh, one out of two so the first step is i'm going to identify this particular uh, text box so right click on this text box and click on inspect button what this will do it will open up the html code now here see if you can find any one of these locators okay so if i check the html code i have one or 
uh, attribute called name equal to UID. So I can use one of the locator called name, right? So here, uh, using the name attribute, I'm going to identify the element. So for that, there is one interface called web element, and I'll create one uh, user name element, let's say. So what this what is this? This web element is an interface. I've created a variable called username element. Okay. And in this variable, I'm going to put this text box here. Okay. Which Selenium can then identify. So how I how we can do that? Driver on my browser. I'm going to there is a method called find element. Okay, so I'm going to call this method called find element. Then in that you can pass the criteria. So there is a class called by which gives you the methods, which gives you all the methods to identify using your locators, right? So all those eight locators are listed here. Class name, CSS selector, ID, link text, name, partial link text, tag name, and export. So I'm going to use the name attribute, right? And in that, what is the value of the name attribute? The value is UID. So I'll copy this name UID and paste it here. So what this step is doing this using this step, I'm identifying one of the web element on the page and storing it in username element. Then next I want to perform an operation on it. So I'll say username element dot when you press dot, it will give you some of the operations you can perform. So on a text box, what all you can do, you can either clear it. That means if it already has some text, you can clear it or you can click on it or you can simply say send keys using send keys. You can enter the text in it. Okay. So here I'll say this is the user ID. I'll copy it and paste it here. Right. Then, so this is what, what this is doing. It is identifying the element and then performing an operation on it, right? Next is I'm going to enter password, right? So for password, this is again the input tag and then we have type equal to password, name equal to password and so on, right? So I can use again a name attribute, name locator. So this time I'll not define a web element rather I'll use method chaining to perform the operation. So I'll say driver dot find element by dot name and name this time will be I'll copy, I'll copy this value. And then we can directly perform an operation say send keys and here I can pass the data. So say for example, I can say uh, okay, I need to copy the password from here and pass it here. So this is my password. So last step is I have to click on this login button, right? So I click on this login button and here you can see this input it, again, it is of type input and then we have a name equal to BTN login. So I'll copy this name and here I'll say driver dot find element by dot name and the value of name is this and what do you want to do with this you want i want to click on it so clicking on this login button, so i'll enter the username i enter the password and then click on login button this will take me in to that website right like this so uh, this is a very simple example where we are logging in okay once we logged in then we can uh, perform other operations. So for now, I'll just keep it like this. Okay. And I'll create one more class to execute this. So I'll create a class called demo guru 99 project with the main method because I need a main method to execute. You can create that main method within the same class also, just creating it separately so that uh, we can, uh, and just to keep the things neat and clean. So I'll say guru 99 project guru 99 project equal to new guru 99 project. Then I'll say 
guru 99 project dot first i'm invoking the browser and then i'll log in so it will ask me to log in okay uh, one thing i did is uh, i have hard coded the values here so i have to use these values right or maybe i can just remove these for now and from here also i don't need it this and i'll just log in okay so let's run this code right click run as java application so it will invoke the browser it will navigate to demo.guru99 then it will enter the username enter the password and you can see we have logged in successfully logged in to the application okay so for now i'll just close it okay and here also i will um, again reintroduce those username and password and will replace this with username and password so i'll say send keys username here and uh, pass that variable as a password here sorry uh, not in the invoke browser rather in the login method okay and here also uh, this password will be replaced here so this way we are making the password as I mean username and password as variables right so i've saved all the files right click run as java application so it is navigating to demo guru 99 entering the username password and then logged in right so uh, that's all for now in this session. In upcoming session, we are going to talk about the other um, locators and identifiers which we have, and we are going to do a lot of assignments around it. That's all for now. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next session.